Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, may I have your attention please because coming to you live from the beautiful on-air studios in Dallas, Texas, this is Far Out Fiesta. I am your host and humble narrator, Richard Houghton. Please give it up for our amazing cast, Kristen Keith. Yay! Rob Hutsmith. Yay! And special guest star, Marisol Vera. Yeah! Before we go any further, we need to get to meet the cast, and I have one question for each and every one of you. Um, what's your flavor? Fra- I'll start again. What is your favorite flavor of ice cream? Uh, Kristen. This is actually one where I immediately know the answer. Awesome. <laughs> Mint chocolate chip. That's good stuff. Rob? Well, Homegirl stole my thunder yet That's again. Okay. You can have so, that. So, well, well, uh, well, well, you know, okay, well. Butter pecan. Oh, butter pecan's good on, stuff. Okay, favorite. mint what? chocolate chip. Yes. What is it? I'm a Rocky Road girl. Rocky Road oh, is good. I actually like pistachio. Um, pistachio. Yeah. What did Marisol say? What you... Rocky Road. Rocky Road. Oh, Rocky. Yeah. That's good stuff. <laughs> really? Is there a bad ice cream? No. Uh, yeah, 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 there is. What is it? Oh, yeah. uh, like the bubblegum flavor. Okay, kind. you're right. Oh, yes. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Well, you'd like to drink Big Red, so that ah, doesn't... There's I nothing wrong with Big it. Red. Yeah, I love Big Red. Far up. Let's fiesta. Yes. Inkwell, Inkwell and Squitterella. Dr. Radiswell and Carmen botched your surgery. Although you're much easier to understand now, you have a squiddish-looking head on a human body. With a squid-sized penis. Don't think I've forgotten about that. He used that squid-sized penis to metamorphosize, metamorphosize me into a half-woman, half-squid. Before I metamorphosized, my vagina was shaking its head and saying, No, bueno. Your vagina has a head? Not anymore. Cool. If I'm going to be your co-super villain, I'll need a cool name. And the cool costume with your breasts exposed. Pardon? <laughs> what would you like your cool super villain name to be? Squidfishes. That sounds more like a ruler derby name. Squidly Quinn. DC Comics might take issue with that. <laughs> Squidrella. <gasps> I love it. Do you feel like getting sandwiches? Yes, I do. I also want to work on my cool vil- villain boys. And plot our revenge against Dr. Rediswell in common. Did you know he ate really messy corn in a kiddie pool while he was doing my surgery? I sure do love sandwiches. At a D sandwich shop. So what's good here? I have a bank, a bank hankering for small fish, crabs, and shrimp. There they are! Dr. Radiswell and Carmen. I thought they would be here. So, no sandwiches? Are you feeling guilty at all, Dr. Radiswell? Um, no. This is light mayo. Not about the the amount of calories in your condiment. Oh, oh, wait, wait. For killing former President Squid in a botched voice box humanization? Yes. Well, when you kill as many patients as I do, I mean, you learn to stop being so hard on yourself. Hey, are you going to finish those Fritos? The Fritos are the perfect complement to really messy corn. <laughs> yeah, no crap. Drop the Fritos, Dr. Reddit's will. A couple of menacing-looking squid villains? I guess I'll be going. Not so fast, Carmen. Well, ew, she grabbed me with a squid tentacle. I use the suction cups of my tentacles to hold my prey. What if I don't want to be prey? Nobody wants to be prey. <laughs> Do you know who I am, Doctor? Um... Pam Dauber of Mork and Mindy fame? I, I think he was former President Squid, who we thought had died on the operating table, but is now part man, part Squid supervillain. I was for... Yeah, what she said. Um, what are you going to do to us? Kill us? I am Inkwell! I am Squidrella! Um, you seem to be answering questions that I didn't ask. What do you think, Squidarilla? Should we kill them instantly because of what they did to us? Or give them a chance to save their miserable lives? I have already started to devour Carmen. <laughs> Spit me out! No harm, no foul. Hey, hey, please don't kill me. I mean, I'm two seasons behind on Thrones. Never let it be said that Inkwell is not a generous supervillain. <laughs> Inkwell is not a generous <gasps> supervillain. Oh! Oh! What the fuck? Dr. R? Your choice is made! <laughs> Inkwell has grabbed me his tentacles and he's pecking my bones apart with his squid Oh, with his squid beak. <laughs> oh, I, I felt it was important to finish that sentence. 
is there anything I can do to save my life? I'll leave that to my co-villain, Squidrilla! So much pressure. Okay, here goes. The orange Fanta at the drink station isn't working properly. It's mostly carbonated water. Drink it. Oh, fuck that! Oh, your tentacle is strangling me. Ugh. Okay, well, they're dead. Let's grab some sandwiches and start Leia shopping. Cool. Can I grab, can I make it a combo by adding chips and a drink? Yes, I think it's two dollars. <laughs> Precinct! Hey, there's that drug dealing scum, Silviario, enjoying macaroons with a couple of nefarious grandchildren. What do you say we make their lives a living hell and then bust her ass? Well, uh, what would the book say? You've been my partner long enough to know that this cat doesn't play by the book. Yeah, but she'll spot us if we use our kick-ass detective car. Then it looks like we'll be borrowing a backhoe. Buddy, I like your style. All right, Silviario. As soon as we destroy a whole bunch of city property, you're going down. <laughs> and let's uh, try not to maim her grandkids. Fluck them! <laughs> Damn right. Yeah. Back at the precinct. As chief of police, Michelle Shaw of this precinct, with a tragically underdeveloped backstory, but from what I can figure out, I'm a very, very busy um, uh, p police chief. As Fran King from Internal Affairs, I've come a I come across as a hard ass, but really, fluck, man, I'm a diamond ass. You dig? I won't take up too much of your time. What's this all about? Diamond ass. That's like a really hard, hard ass. Right. An extra hard, uh, hard ass. Copy that. Please continue. Two of your detectives refuse to play by the book. Oh, uh, if it's not... Okay, if it's the two detectives I'm thinking of, they may have unorth unorthodox methods. But jump in Hosafat, they get results. But at what cost, Chief Shaw? What cost? Nine dollars an hour. Yeah. That's not bad. Mm -hmm. Still, as a very, very hard... Got it. I'll need to talk to the two gentlemen, and I'm going to use that word incorrectly. The two gentlemen in question. Fine. You have 15 minutes. Prick face, ass nose, get in here. Chief, internal affairs friend. Hello, ass nose. Hello, prick face. Hey, I'm ass nose. He's prick face. Let's get down to brass tacks. I'm always down to brass tacks. You two get you two cost the city millions arresting drug kingpin Silviario. Yeah, and that was a clean collar. Resting her kept a thousand keys a smack off the street. Yeah, and sixty machetes out of the hands of the machete fifty-five. That would have meant that some of the machete fifty-five could have access to more than one machete. Yeah. I mean, the logistics of getting a new name and logo alone would have been... Yeah, and we were able to lock Silviario up for a long damn time. Uh, High five. Woo. High fives are against policy 1762Q. Oh, she really is a hard ass. Yeah, not to belabor that point. <laughs> Silvario just posted bail. She's probably going to walk. Hey, not on my watch. Or but mine. Not on either of our watches. Yeah. You, you have 24 hours to get her back in her cell. And don't even think about watching, I don't even think I won't be watching your every move, because I will. Silviario's lair. Silviario has internal affairs Fran and is holding her hostage. Yeah, I guess she's not as much of a hard ass as she thought she was. Even if she is in internal affairs, we have to save her. And pinch the Silvario, too. We'll need some explosives. Better yet... Nukes. Buddy, I like your style. Hey, what are you doing on your phone? Ordering nukes from Amazon. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Good, Good afternoon, afternoon Garland. So I have to be the damn announcer now, too? I mean, what, that sucks. I'll do it. Uh, like hell you will. I am hell. Good afternoon. Hey, 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 hey. What, what, you're, you're, you're doing it like, like hell? Every second with you is like attracting hemorrhoid-seeking owls. Good afternoon, Garland. I hate you. Hey, we're making noise in Garland. And it's not the usual out-of-season fireworks, cars backfiring, and gunshots. Your second favorite local morning show, AM Garland, is moving, moving to, to the afternoons. afternoons. That's right. 
A.M. Garland is becoming... Good afternoon, Dr. Garland. I'm Rebecca. My co-host. <laughs> and this is my co-host, Teague. And we don't use last names because we're both stalker magnets with a dash of witness protection. And don't think uh, we have forgotten about Miguel and Letty Lee. And don't consider this an obvious emotion either. It is. On uh, Good Afternoon Garland, Rebecca and I will be your co-hosts, and Miguel will be handling traffic. Hey, jump up my butt, Teague. Uh, up my butt. This is, uh, this is Miguel doing traffic. Duh, duh, very many cars on the 635 and the 35 and the 75 and the 30. Duh, duh. And Letty Lee will be joining us for health reporting. Drunk health reporting until I can get out of my fucking contract. You producers are monsters. Uh, before we bring out somebody our guests, listeners, could possibly be interested in hearing about, let's go to traffic with Miguel. Hey, 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 my, my segment's not for six more minutes. Oh, so you're not professional enough to do your fucking easy job? Oh, I'll do my fucking easy job, and then I'll find somebody to pop a cap in your fat little... Miguel! The, 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 the 35th interstate is... That's not what it's called. Hey, I'm doing improv. Uh, since it's nowhere near time for a commercial Teague, any thoughts? Fuck you. Get the camera off. Whoa, no, not my turn. Letty Lee. Letty Lee. What? I'm throwing it at you. You better not. Today's health report is a deep dive into the shady world of cotton swabs made with inferior cotton. When we get back from commercial, your real host... Teague. And Rebecca will bring out the real guests. Hi, Megan. I'm home. And we need to talk. It's important. Hmm. What's that delicious smell? Now, don't get mad, Daddy. Oh, I'm already furious. If you are already furious, many, maybe what I have to tell you won't make you any angrier. Yeah, fat chance. Why are you shaming that chance? Megan, what are you not telling me? We may or may not have guests arriving for the special dinner I'm cooking any minute. Go on. That was it. Um, well, we need another element to make it truly wacky. You remember the last time it got wacky? <laughs> I do fine with just one thumb. Who does? This guy. That works so much better with two thumbs. Uh, well, um, while I was in my corporate taxidermist office, I received an urgent phone call from Miss Pulitz, your math teacher. Those math teachers always calling with problems. Uh, well, while that's excellent wordplay, uh, Megan, you're still failing math. I'll get extra credit in math if you can be civil to some of my guests. Well, I find it unusual that your math grade depends on my social skills. I'll play along. As long as the guests aren't you know, your mother and my ex-wife Doris and her new husband, Peter. Uh-oh. Try not to be mad, Daddy. Is anybody home? <laughs> no. We're both people. What? You asked if anybody was home, and we're, we're not home. We're people. <laughs> hey. How's your fake career going? Uh, better than your marriage to Doris went. Uh, uh boys, don't start. Daddies. And the only way you can tell he's a man is because he knows when to turn his head and cough. Hey, I will split your face with a rake. I will poach your feet and serve them to you a toe at a time. I will take out an ad offering free room and board to chiggers in the chigger version of Craigslist. And I'm going to send them to your pants. What if I refuse delivery? I haven't thought about that. Daddy! Current husband and former husband! Can't we all get along? <laughs> you know, honey, I'm not along. I'm a medium! Dinner's ready! Uh, well, when did you make that? I mean, uh, I've literally been here as long as you have. Remember, I'm not gonna get extra credit if you can't be civil, and I'll get extra, extra credit if I seat people next to the people they are most likely to fight with. Uh, Megan, I can amp up your aura if you'd like. Yeah, and there he goes. Amp up her aura. I mean, what, what did, you, did you find this guy? What, what, Jupiter? A&W Rupia. 
I can get I can get Megan a math tutor. Hey, hey, we don't want her getting too smart now. Too smart? Okay, that's, that's never been a problem for you. Hey, what if I seduce your teacher, Megan? Uh, with whose penis? How can you even ask that question, Megan? Hey, what, what's the matter with your face? What do you mean? Here, let me send you a quick selfie. Got it. Daddy! My face is so swollen, I look like my blood was replaced with pudding. No, I'll never pass my math class. Yeah, it, it's so weird that her grades are tied to weird social experiments. True, but but school is just it's right down the street. Yeah. Powerplex. Powerplex. Today on Powerplex, we will be showing you two easy workouts that you can do right from your computer. Can I also do them from my smartphone? You can, but the images will be much smaller. So. Do I have to be smaller too? If you want. Most of the workouts I do in front of my computer require lotion and tissue. <laughs> Hugo knows what I'm talking about. Before we get our sweat on- Mine is already partially on. Before we get our sweat on, I'd like to ask for a couple of audience volunteers. What about you, ma'am? Oh, are you calling me Chunky? And you, sir. Are you calling me corpulent? Kitsy and I are going to walk you through two low impact exercises that you can do in front of any device you want to do them. That will work that core faster than tipping over a thousand tractor tires. That's abhorrent. I'm going to hate this. We'll start with you, Dane. whoop dee flucking do. Bend over and touch your ankles. Well, the only way I'd be able to do that is if, um... Your Achilles was sliced? What? No. Ah! Stop the whining or I'll make sure you bleed out. All right. Babwa. Oh, uh, how do you know my name? It's your turn. Oh, please. I don't want to die. Well, we're only allowed to kill one person a show. How? Who could possibly allow you to do that? At this point... We have no choice. I came here because they promised me Applebee's bucks. We'll start with shoestring strangling struggling. I don't know what that... No! <laughs> <laughs> oh, on tonight's Ghost Seekers, Masterson and Coral lead Skittish Mac and Angela into an abandoned mansion that is rumored to be, quote, haunted as fluck, unquote. Let's see if they can make contact with the spirit realm. Coral, did you hear that? I probably did. Uh, what did you think you heard? Oh, clear as day. Well, uh, what about day is clear? Well, I, I heard what sounded like a male voice saying, Pay up, you landed on Marvin Gardens. Now, wait, listen again. I mean, well, maybe if you cupped your ear, your, your hands behind your ears. I, I know, I know how to listen. Do you? Now, whoosh. There it was again. Uh, what I heard was a female voice saying, My thimble didn't land on Marvin Gardens. Well, well, the port is, there are definitely ghosts down in the basement. Definitely. We should send Skittish Mac and Angela down to investigate. Skittish Mac? Angela? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I think the ghosts went out to the, the band. I, I'll go and check on them and then I'll wait until that oil change place is open up in the morning because the band needs a lube. Don't listen to him, Masterson. If there's a spirit presence in the basement, no matter how malevolent... Malevolent? I mean, does that mean likely to give me a foot massage? Is that what you think it means? Um, uh, yes. I mean, as long as the foot massage is not too pokey. Then that's what malevolent means. A not too pokey foot massage. Angela, here's the, uh, oh, uh, what do we call it? Um, the, the spectral voice resonator? A tape recorder? Oh, yeah, got it. Skittish Mac. Uh, you, you can just call me Skittish. <laughs> oh, okay, sk uh, Skittish. Here's the, uh, oh, oh God, what, what do we call it? Um, the apparition image capture. Yeah, the, the, the camera. Right, now, 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 you two head down to the basement and scan the area. Now, when you find something, we'll come down and check it out. On it. Uh, or we could go to Arby's for a beef and cheddar. Fine. Wait, potato cakes? Jamocha shake? Going. Oh, wait, what was that? 
My instruments are detecting a very strong presence next to the air hockey table. What's that? You think I should go upstairs? Nobody said that. Nope. Maybe it was the ghost. Now stop clowning around there, skittish, and see if we can prove that this place is haunted. Angela, are you getting any readings? Not yet. Try leaving Skittish Mac down in the basement by himself while you come upstairs and enjoy fresh scones with Masterson and I. But I love scones, and I hate ghosts. These are the best scones I've ever had. Guys, I'm sensing a strong presence. The scones are just the right amount of sweet. Guys, I'm seeing very clearly two 40-ish year olds. And, and, and I don't usually enjoy tart. We're playing Monopoly. <laughs> tart can be off putting. Oh, crap. The man is strangling the woman. Yeah, and who wants a pastry that's too sweet? <laughs> Not me. Oh, crap. He saw me. He stopped strangling her and is looking right at me. Oh, he's pissed. The scone was such a delightful choice. Mm. They're, they're both coming at me. Uh, uh, what do you say? We three take a communal nap and then go uh, go check on Skittish. <laughs> Cool. Yeah, I'm in. Ah! Sir, sir, we are napping. <clears throat> um, tonight on Budget Hit Trip, codename Angelina and codename Boyd has some fantastic tips for you if you need to take out Lisbon dignitaries. We are Lisbon dignitaries. What does take out translate into welcome to budget hit travel where we offer helpful advice for assassins on the go i'm the budget hit trip co-host my code name is angelina weren't they going to augment my voice no oh god okay the app was 99 cents okay well, we'll meet my co-host named boyd <laughs> Oh, thank you. Yeah, code name Angelina. Yeah, yeah. Uh, tonight we'll be discussing the cheapest way to get to Lisbon, and some ways you might not think about about hiding that paper trail. Our quote guests unquote tonight are Lisbon dignitaries. Love us. Thank you for your courtesy. Meat hooks dangled us by our suspenders on the flight in. And they took about a pint of my blood. I believe they got a bone marrow sample from me. Why are we blindfolded? Do not interrupt me. I'm blindfolded because I interrupted you. Next time, I take a toe. Please, no. I only have six, and they're spread out over two feet. I was told we would be getting bacala. I don't know what that is. Bacala is one of Lisbon's national dishes made from dried salted codfish. Oh, well, you'll get your bacala, but it may be the last thing you ever eat. I am not understanding. Why are we here again? On tonight's show, we will be learning about how to get in and out of Lisbon Portela Airport without being detected. You shouldn't be doing that. And inexpensive disguises that you can use to slip in and slip out of the Lisbon Capitol building. I don't think you should be telling people that. And I don't think you would be quite so chatty with your tongue yanked out. I'll be hard. Lovis, here's a diagram of Lisbon's Portela Airport. If you wanted to get in undetected, how would you do it? I can't tell you that. Perhaps a nose flaying will loosen your lips. My lips are already pretty loose. That's where you took a pint of blood. I don't even know what a nose flaying is. Show him, Boyd. Ah! <laughs> Agatha, I'll ask you the same question. But I don't know anything about sneaking into Lisbon Airport. Let's see if snapping your neck helps with your little memory problem. Ah! Ah, now, when you come back from the commercial, we will have more helpful tips on eliminating bad guys in Lisbon. Chuck, uh, we need a couple more dignitaries. I'm Karsten Ray. Uh, your farmer's branch has some talent host. You may know me as that guy whose wife is way more famous than him. 
What was his name again? <laughs> uh, or you may also know me as that guy who pants the New Year's baby on national TV and now is not even allowed to watch TV on New Year's Eve. <laughs> It's my responsibility to keep the show running smoothly. Now, it's also my responsibility to support you, my loyal fans, and Dave, my Coke dealer. Hey, um, could I try that last part again? <laughs> I'm Gina G, and you probably know me from my hit single, Bravo Martinis. No. What about uh, Chapelle of Choking? No. They dominated the Latin Child electronic dance remix charts for over a month. Well, I'm a very famous singer, and when the producers of Famous Farmer's Brunch has some talent approached me about doing a judge... <laughs> oh, sorry. I mean, probably being a judge. Okay. Anyway, I'm Gina G. You probably know me from my hit single Bravo Martinis. No? What? Chapelle of Choking? No? They dominated the Latin uh, Child Electronic Dance Remix charts for over a month. Well, I'm a very famous singer, and when the producers of Farmer's Branch has some talent approached me about doing a judge, I mean, <laughs> I mean being a judge, after I found out about it, uh, being paid, and that it would take care of my 72 speaking tickets on March Lane, I said, I'm in! Oh, hey, oh, hey, oh, hey, yo, I'm Mickey Big. You may know me as a racist comedian who does one abortion joke after another, <laughs> up until the point where people are actually crying in the audience. But as part of a plea bargain, I have agreed to be a judge on Farmer's Branch has some talent. I'll be the bad boy judge. 54-year-old washed up bad boy judge. So, a drunken Irishman walks into an abortion clinic. I'm Darletta Dean. As a former child star on Libby's Chaotic Life, I know what it takes to become a star. Do you remember that, Libby's Chaotic Life? I, I think you can still get it on Hulu, Take This Crap, you know, their newest service that pays you to use it. <laughs> um, but I know what it takes to be a star. I, I'm less clear on what it takes to maintain that stardom, but I'm, I'm hoping... I'm hoping this talent show podcast for a dubious Dallas suburb will do for me what Kill Bill did for John Travolta. <laughs> but uh, make me wear my hair in a ponytail. <laughs> we, have some, we have some phenomenal Farmer's Branch talent performing for you live tonight. Now, before we bring out our first act, judges, do you have any advice for tonight's talent? I mean, we'll start with you, Darletta, since there's a chance that some of our viewers may actually know who you are. Oh, thanks, Karsten. I think the best advice I can give anyone trying to break into showbiz is to be yourself. Well, that's terrific advice, Darletta. And if that doesn't work, be someone else. Mickey yeah. Bing, uh, any advice for our talents? Oh, don't get fat. Uh, that's some trademark Mickey Bean sense of humor. Never been more serious, Karsten. Which brings us to you, Gina G. Uh, any advice for uh, tonight's talents? Can I plug my new single first? <laughs> no fucking way. <laughs> really? Okay, fine. Talent? Never go on a show where they won't even let you plug your new single. Hey, that's not at all helpful. Then I'm abstaining from saying anything about our first contestant. I mean, isn't that just a way for us to add another character to the sketch? Without it getting confusing? Oh, wait, oh right, yeah, you're not talking. Oh, hey, could we bring out our first guest? This show is turning into an abortion! I mean, what have the producers told you about using that word on air? Please bring out the guest. I have a very short attention span. Ladies I and gentlemen, our first guest tonight comes to us from an old refrigerator box on Martian Valley View. The mistress of a thousand voices, Meredith Mercedes. Good to be with you, ladies and gentlemen. I'd like to start with a quick impression of Farmer's Branch Fire Chief Steve Mar Parker. Hi, I'm doing... I'm Steve Parker. <laughs> Next, I'd like to do my impression of Farmer's Branch Librarian Sharon Rankin attending the opera. This opera is very different than a library. That's my time. Good night. <laughs> oh, yeah! <laughs> nice job, Meredith. Judges? What do you think? I mean, keep in mind, our judges rate the contestants on a scale of one to five. And we'll start with you, Gita G. Oh, 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 oh right, you're, you're protesting. <laughs> yeah. so, so what did you think about Meredith's act, uh, Mickey Bean? Oh, that depends. Will she go out with me? Not even on a dare. Uh, both of your voices sounded like you. I give you a two. Mother flicker. Uh, Darletta. What? 
Uh, what did you think of Meredith's act? Oh, uh, nobody told me I was supposed to be watching. <laughs> oh, can she do it again? No. <laughs> oh, okay, then I give her an eight. <laughs> it's a five-point scale there, Darlena. <laughs> eight. I'm sensing a pattern. <laughs> uh, we'll pause for a quick word from our sponsors, and then we'll bring out our next guest. I took a dump on the craft services table. I thought that was fondue. Oh. And this has been for a fiesta <laughs> episode 103 with the fondue. Yeah, <laughs> the poo, the poo, the poo fondue, the poo do, the fond poo. <laughs> Give it up for amazing cast, Kristen Keith. Yeah. Rob Hudspeth. Star, Marisol Miller, and I am Richard Houghton. Yeah, the the Richard Houghton. Richard Houghton. A week from the last show, has anybody got anything they would like to talk about? Uh, uh, it's been raining. <laughs> I saw. All right, cool. I had an audition. Uh, me too. Yeah. Okay, uh, several auditions. <laughs> Not me. I don't get to do that anymore. Well, it was an audition. Audition for my own project, but still. Oh uh, well, yeah, at least you're getting some. Yeah, to get some call projects. back. I mean, some auditions. Yeah, some project. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you get a call back. 